HTML. And now here's your host of Wisdom Speaks, Wisdom Williams. Hi! Welcome to Wisdom Speaks. I am your host, Wisdom Williams, and you are the most important person on the line. Why do I say that? Because we are not here for fame or fortune. We are not here for any other reason but to be a blessing to you and yours. If this is your first time tuning in, we are here to enlighten, encourage, and empower you through spiritual principles, life experiences, research, and, of course, wisdom. We are not therapists, and we do not claim to have all of the answers to all of your problems, but we do believe that the answers you seek are found in the Word of God. Therefore, we want to make them plain for you. Joining me tonight will be my co-host, Pastor Kendrick Breckenridge from the Sufficient Grace Church in Kansas City, Missouri, and the Evangelist Gina Floyd from the Living Word Church in Kansas City, Kansas. Our topic on tonight is going to be, um, we're going to discuss the new beginnings, hallelujah. Out with the old and in with the new. We chose this topic because, of course, the new year is coming. And so I would like to read a scripture um, that the Lord has given me concerning, basically, change. And we talk about out with the old and in with the new. It's Romans 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, me personally, I'm not much into the New Year's Revolution, but I am all for the renewing of my mind. I am for the transformation that the Word of God speaks about. I believe that change is imminent, change is necessary, change is important. I think about the good times in my life where God has put me in a position where it's time for change. And sometimes these changes may be difficult. Nevertheless, they are very, very necessary for our growth, our, our prosperity, and for God's glory and His purpose to come about. So, um, as we talk tonight about new beginnings, I do want to go ahead and beginning of the hour, and announce to our listeners that tonight is going to be our last night on the Artist First Radio Network. Uh, we are changing our location. You can find us on Facebook or at speakers.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. The reason for this move is in the past, we were only uh, able to broadcast live via the internet. Now you can listen to the show on the go, on your smartphone, on your laptop, on your tablet, etc. You can download the free app for Spreaker. That's S P R E A K S P R E A K E R on your mobile devices today. So that's one change that we are making, the ministry is making, um, for the following year, beginning the first Monday of January. So we want to invite you to please feel continue to tune in, and we will continue to bless you with the Word of God, with our experiences, and of course, wisdom. All right, but having said that, I'm going to go ahead and pass to Pastor Breckenridge. Amen. Good evening, Wisdom. Good evening, Pastor. To me, one of the foundational scriptures when we're talking about moving from old things to new things is 2 Corinthians 5.17. And the familiar text is, says, Therefore, any man, being Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And when we think about becoming new, new creatures, uh, moving in the newness of, of, of God, there's a, lot, there's a tendency a lot of times uh, to want to look back at the, the way things were. A lot of times when uh, people get stuck doing things, but say, this is the way I've always done it, so this is how I'm doing it. And there's a tendency uh, to get stuck in what I call the uncomfortable comfort zone. The uncomfortable comfort zone. People uh, get used to doing things, and so they don't really have a lot of times any reasons for continuing to do it, other than the fact that they've always 
don't even uh, enjoy. Uh, I, uh, I'm often uh, entertained when I think about my parents when, uh, when they were uh, newlyweds. They, each one of them got the other one really liked the show. And so they used to watch the show together until they were talking about it. And each one of them got the other one liked it, and neither one of them liked the show. So they had been watching the show that neither one of them liked because it's just what they had always done. And when they thought the other person uh, enjoyed it and they hadn't really talked about it. And sometimes, as much as that's funny, uh, it, it can also be tragic because there are a lot of times that we are doing things that aren't different, that aren't healthy for us, that we need to put those things, those things aside. And watch this. There are sometimes that things that used to be good for you are no longer good for you. Things that you want to stay you can no longer sustain you. We, we've talked in past times about the, the saint that is that should be a milk saint, I mean, be a meat saint, a meat-consuming uh, saint, that is still a milk-consuming saint. And the Bible says why you should be teachers, you still have needed being taught. So we have to get to the point where we no longer are in a position of needing to be taught, but we should be teachers. We have no, no longer have a need to be taught the foundational principles of God, but we should be, we should be uh, uh, going to the deeper things, dealing with uh, bigger issues, being able to conquer bigger, bigger, uh, bigger foes, winning bigger battles, but we're still uh, being satisfied with small victories. And, and, and sometimes you hear people, even when they give testimonies, they talk about the same thing over and over again. It's like, didn't God do something new for you? And so we have to get to the point where we learn to put the past in the past and embrace the future. Em embrace the future, what we're doing right now, preparing for what is uh, what is to come. And so we need to not get to the point where we're so comfortable with where we are that we lose sight of where we're going. Mm -hmm. Amen. Old things are passed away. Mm -hmm. All things become new. I have, a, I have a new way of talking, a new way of, of understanding, a new way of, uh, of, of communicating because a lot of times we just talk different. <laughs> not listening differently. So, so I have a different way of doing the things that I need to do. Uh, about looking to uh, do things the way I used to because uh, when I was a child, I stink as a child, I understood as a child, I reasoned as a child, you know. Yeah. When I became a man, I put away childish things because it was time to put away the old and to embrace the new. Amen. So Amen. So so That's so true. But people are scared of change. And I'm scared of it, you know, because this is familiar, I'm used to this. So I, I'd rather just stay here than to, you know, launch out into the deep. You know, God wants us to get off the banks, get off where the crowd is, or and launch out into the deep, you know. And this is what uh, 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 meat feeders is the bone feeders. You know, if you love fish, you know anything about fishing. Bone feeders, you know, snails and crawfish and all that is right there in the muddy surface. We're not very deep. You can get those real quick. But God wants to take us out further. And so change is inevitable because time brings about a change. Amen. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, the things I used to do when I was 20, I can't do now. <laughs> you know, um, the, the way of my reasoning now is far more different. And, and thank God I didn't become an old fool. Praise God. You know, <laughs> I'm getting better as time progresses. I learned from my mistakes. So, you know, uh, when, when this, this is a scripture that says in Ecclesiastes third chapter, it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. To everything is a season. You know, so God's right there. Well, you know, see, seasons, what? We have four seasons in a year, correct? That's right. We, we have winters, we have spring, we have summer, we have fall. You know, but each one feeds off of the other. And you need each part to grow. You see what I'm saying? If we don't have winter, then we won't be productive and the fruits can't come forth in the spring. Because the snow, the, the freeze, the hard freeze kills off a lot of stuff. <laughs> and sometimes we need to be still. We need to let the dead leaves fall off. We need to let it just fall off. We need to let God purge us. We need to let Him just, just wash us and make us anew. So when spring comes, that's new life, you know, that's new life, and now he can bring forth, you know, but him that he loves, he, you know, God, you know, when we abide in the vine, he's going to purge us, you know, he's going to cut off that dead thing, you know, and that's changed, why, you know.
sometimes, like you said, sometimes people get stuck there and stuck in a rut and they don't want to change. But again, there is a season for it. And that's good to know because life brings about change all the time. Amen. Life okay. brings about change all the time. You know, uh, um, you know, we, we just don't know what a day may bring. You know, and so it's good to uh, learn to just go with the flow of God. You know, just just Lord, I accept your will, and and that's what I'll do. Um, you know, like you were saying earlier, it's just about uh, New Year's resolutions. And uh, but since we make vows to God, you know, and you know, have you ever, you know, Lord do something for you, and you still reflecting that you you make a promise to God, and you say, Lord, because you did this, or if you do this, I'll do this. You know, mm-hmm. um, or like like when my daughter, you know, almost lost her a couple of weeks ago, and God raised her up and seen fit to keep her in the land of living. And when we were in chapel at the hospital, and God just, you know, touched my child and just, and I just held her because someone that was in the chapel had just lost their dad, and, and they were crying and grieving. And, and that was a change. That was a change, you know. Uh, it was just, it, the family circle was broken, and, and and so they were grieved, and, and after they left down, and God blessed them, and I just held on to my child, and I just cried, and cried, and cried, and thank the Lord that my child was still here. And I promised God, I promised him, I made a vow to him, that I would do all that he commands me to do. You know, that I laid down my life for the gospel. I, you know, because, you know, it, it's time out for praying church. It's time out, you know. It's time out. Jesus is soon to come. The harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. You know, and no one wants to inconvenience himself. No one wants to step off into that new season. But God is, it's a new season. He wants to take us to another level. You know, he wants to take us higher and, you know, from glory to glory. But we've got to get out of comfort zone and let him make us. And I'm excited what God is doing. And this is truly a faith walk. This is, this is a faith walk. And if you walk by faith and not by sight, you know, uh, each son of God is truly an adventure. <laughs> it truly is. And this upcoming year, the Lord made some promises to me. You know, day after New Year's is my birthday, and I'm turned 50, and that's Jubilee. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and I'm expecting Jubilee. Yes, I am. I'm expecting Jubilee because of all the things I've encountered, all the things I had to suffer, you know, for the past seven years, I expect that. But God promised me that he would make my ladder greater, you know. And so it's just good, you know, but you can't get scared. Don't get stuck there, people. Don't get stuck. Just go ahead and let God take you to the next step. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, so anyway, um, I'm glad that we're talking about things because, um, as we all said, we went around and uh, given our uh, opinion about change. I think that change must start first within. You know, I, and, and, I, and I just right off the top of my head, real before I forget, I want to challenge the leaders and the preachers and the teachers and the prophets and the evangelists to look within themselves and make changes. Because I'm finding that where it's easy for us to dictate it's easy for us to tell other people what they need to be doing. But a lot of times we start to look at ourselves and make the necessary changes. And we're, you know, out of God's will sometimes we can't even see it. So we really need to start looking at self. I, I love that song that Michael Jackson sang. I'm looking at the man in the mirror, he said. And I'm asking him to change his way. I was talking to a friend earlier about the condition of the world, the condition of man, period. And he said, where do we start? And I said, for me, for me, it starts with self. We have to lead by example. It's no more, you know, it's the same, it's the, it's the same concept as it is with our children. It's not do as I say, it's do as I do. You know, if we are leading by example, we're being truly leading by example, if people watch our conduct, as Christians, as preachers, as teachers, as leaders, as evangelists, if we conduct ourselves in a way that is pleasing in God's sight, what people see who don't necessarily know Him, when they see us, it may be more appealing to them. It may, they may be more drawn to them when they 
can sing, but we're not, we're not practicing what we preach. So I think it's very, very important that we look at self and we change. Um, and, and I just have to say this because I know it's going to be the case with me. Um, and if we make certain changes, we just might lose some friends along the way. Because um, and not everybody's going to celebrate change, the, ch the changes that you make. Not everybody can go where you're going. And not everybody's going to understand why certain changes have to be made. Nevertheless, we have to make them. And then sometimes I heard uh, Evangelist talking about dead leaves. Sometimes those dead leaves are relationships. And um, I'm just thinking about, even right now, as I'm dealing with certain things, even if I was just in front of my children, some of the things that I used to allow uh, my children to do as far as my home is concerned and, and some of the things that I used to let slide and overlook, I don't know, it's no longer going to happen anymore. So a change is taking to me, everybody's not going to be used to, not accustomed to, but nevertheless. It's necessary for the next level where God is taking me to do. Um, so I think that it's very important that we lead by example as leaders, that we understand that not everybody is going to celebrate the change, not everybody's going to understand or appreciate the change. Nevertheless, it is necessary um, that we move from all the first even. Um, I just I simply love everyone at all. The first thing is such a blessing to the wisdom, wisdom speaks. So, um, and, and, and I truly do, and I hate to go, but it's just, it, that's just the time it is, and that's just the instruction I receive from the Lord. And I have to obey God. You know, I want to please God rather than man. Amen? So that's where we are today. And I'm saying to all of, you, all of you who have difficult changes to make, it may be in the job that you're working at. If God has been talking on your heart, I heard a young man give a testimony yesterday. This young man gave a testimony of people, other people raised their hands, and they testified about how God kept them, how God delivered them from, from this thing, a drug addiction, or suicide, and so on and so forth, and how God gave them a job. Well, this young man got up, stood up and said, I thank God that he took my job. Hallelujah. He said he was glad that God took the job that he had because the money he was making, he was not spinning it right, and it was costing him to have problems in his life, and he didn't have a story straight. So he was glad that God snatched that job from him. That was strange for him. Nevertheless, it was necessary. Having said that, I will pass the pastor back to Rich. Thank you, Somebody that that uh, is not 
And I would say like when you're talking about the young man, you know, it's all money's not good money, you know, but it's domino time or like play domino. <laughs> all money's not good money. And some things you think is a blessing is not. Because we take blessings as stuff, as things. But you yeah. know, the blessing is that man who, you know, walk into the world, you know, whose iniquities have been forgiven and whose sin is covered. That's the blessing. You know, oh, having the grace of God upon my life, so whether I'm uh, without or if I have abundance, I'm still blessed. You know what I'm saying? Because God's favor is upon my life. So it's not about the things, and it's not about all this. And we've got to be careful that we don't become like Martha, where we're coming about with so many things. But we need to find out what's needful. What's the needful thing? Because Mary, she chose that which was needful that nobody could take away from her. She got that needful part, the Bible says, you know, and she sat at the feet of Jesus, you know, and and that's where we have to stay, at the feet of Jesus. We got to stay at the cross. We got to stay at that position where God can use us because we can't hear him while we're busy. You can't hear him when you're busy. You know, you can't hear that still small voice when you come and you, you hear that everywhere you're doing this and doing that. And maybe God didn't tell you to do. See, he's only required to annoy what he appoints. And sometimes we get it twisted thinking that, you know, instead of me following God, I want him to follow me. Amen. You know, and, you know, but Jesus said for us to follow him. You know, follow him. And if I follow him, then he will equip me, he'll lead me with to go. He'll, he'll restore my soul. He'll, he'll fill me while I'm born. He, he, he's all I need when I follow him. And I just don't want, you know, this upcoming year, this, you know, this year, this year, you know, God bless this one. When new starts, that's something, you got a new beginning. You have a clean slate. You know? <laughs> it's like a clean tab. You got a, a journal, you know. I love journal because I like to write things, you know, and, and make say prayers to God and, and ask some questions in that journal and see God answer them. So I'd like to have a new journal, you know, at the beginning so I can write down the things God has done. What he has put on my heart in the beginning and see how he materializes it. Not me trying to make it happen, but him materialize those things which he's put in my heart. But, you know, we got to always remember first things first, you know, first things first. And in the beginning of the year, I won't cry. And if I start off right, I end up praying. You know what I'm saying? You know, if I start off, you know, seeking God, keeping Him first. You know, Psalm 27, you know, it says that one thing, David said, I'll seek after. That's one thing. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. That's one thing. You know, and that I can behold the beauty of the Lord in this temple. I want to see your glory, Lord. I want to see your face. You know, and if I'm in his presence, if I if I abide in him, then everything else is gonna come about. You know, that's things for the kingdom of God, his kingdom come, his will be done, and this earth and death of us, you know, that is what's most important. And I don't want to start off the new year full of self. You know, we have to decrease that Christ increase. So I'm just saying yes, Lord. That's that's all God wants. That's that's the word of agreement. Yes. You know, <laughs> I agree with you, Lord. I am agreement with whatever you have for my life. And, and it's, it's a suffering way sometimes we don't want to go through, but Lord, I say yes. Sometimes we don't want to deny ourselves, but I still say yes. You know, and I just accept his way. Because I don't, you know, it's the scripture says, but none of these things shall move me, Acts 28, 24. None of these things shall move me, okay? You know, and I don't even count my way dear. Why? So that, therefore, I can finish my course with joy, and I can continue with the ministry of the gospel of grace that Jesus has entrusted into me. So I don't count my life here. So it's not about me. We have to learn that. It's not about me. It's not about me. Because if you don't, you'll get caught up. You'll get frustrated. You know, all your plans that you have and everything, and then they don't come to pass, and you get mad at God. Well, it's not his fault. I didn't acknowledge him, but on my way, so he can direct my path. So I'm just encouraged about doing that on this year. God bless. Amen. Amen. And so as we talk about the topic of new beginnings, um, we touch based on different types of uh, change and relationships. You know, uh, some of us have uh, had the wrong, I think, the wrong concept of relationships. Worship 
you're listening to the show, on the go, again, I think, on your smartphones or laptops, your tablets, etc. You can download the free app for Speaker, Speaker, on your mobile device today, so you can prepare for that on next week. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, the second one is going to be the Speaker app. Okay, so that's going to be the